Well, good morning. Praise the Lord. Welcome to our broadcast this morning. Thank you so much for joining us. It is always an honor and a privilege to share the Word of God with you this morning. Wherever you're watching us from, thank you so much for connecting with us. Um, we are truly honored to have you in our lives and we thank you for welcoming us into your homes this morning. And I want to encourage you this morning, get out your Bibles, get a pen, get a notebook as we get ready to share God's precious word, let us open up this morning with a word of prayer. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we want to thank you, Father, for another wonderful opportunity to hear, O oh Lord God, and to share your precious word. I pray, O oh Lord God, for every person that is watching this broadcast, every person that is under the influence of my voice this morning. I pray, Lord, that... Lord, you will touch them, that, Lord God, you will heal them in the name of Jesus. I pray that strength will come. I pray that faith will come. I pray that encouragement and hope will come in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I thank you this morning, O Lord, by reason of your word. Faith will come and fear will depart in the name of Jesus. All doubt will leave in Jesus' name. I thank you, O Lord God, that you are able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ask or think this morning. I thank you, O Lord God, that you are Jehovah God. You are the Lord our God, the Lord who heals the Lord, O oh Lord God, who restores. I thank you that you are the God who hears, Father God. And I pray this morning, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus, as we lift up our hands to you, as we lift up our voices to you, as we, Lord God, make our prayers and our petitions known to you, that you will hear from heaven, Father. And I thank you now in the name of Jesus, Lord, O oh God, that even as we will share your word, Father God, I thank you this morning that there is a transforming power in your precious word that will transform lives, that will transform situations this morning in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Lord God, we give you thanks and praise and we give you the glory and the honor and all the worship in Jesus' magnificent name and the people of God said, Amen, Amen and Amen. Well, praise God. Welcome once again to our broadcast. We love you and we thank God for yet another opportunity to share the Word of God with you this morning. And I want to encourage you to go with me uh, to the Gospel of Mark, to St. Mark's Gospel. And um, we're going to uh, read from chapter number 2. <clears throat> and this morning I want to share with you about the subject of taking the limits of God. We serve a God that is without limits. There are no limits to the God we serve. You know, when we when we study the scriptures, when you read the scriptures from Genesis through to Revelation, we know that God is a miracle working God. We know that God is a God who doesn't change. The Bible says he's the same yesterday, today and forever. He's the Alpha and he's the Omega. He's the beginning and the end and everything in between. And regardless of where you are at now this morning, I believe that God is about to change your life this morning. We look to Jesus who's the author and the finisher of our faith. So your faith is not yet done. And my word of encouragement to you this morning, in whatever uh, challenge you may be facing, whatever you're going through, that's a word I'd like to give you this morning, is that um, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And He ain't done with you yet. He is busy with you. Praise God. Now in St. Mark's Gospel, chapter 2, I want to read from verse number 1. And uh, Mark, the Apostle Mark begins as such. He says, And again Jesus entered Capernaum after some days, and it was heard that he was in the house. I'd like you to highlight that. I'd like, to like you to make a mental note of that. It was heard that Jesus was in the house. I'd like you to meditate on that. And um, um, just, to, just, to, just to get you to understand this, that the Bible in Romans chapter number 10, verse 17, the Bible tells us that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. 
The Bible also tells us in St. John's Gospel, the very first chapter, that Jesus Christ is the Word of God. Now here we hear Mark's account. He says, Jesus, after some days, um, he entered Capernaum and it was heard that he was in the house. So I believe that people were talking and the word was going forth. And as the word went forth that Jesus was in the house, I believe that that created an atmosphere for, for faith to come. And that is so important in the, days, in the days that we are living in, is that we become people of faith. We become hearers of the Word of God, because the more we become hearers of the Word of God, the more we become people of faith, that we become products of faith. Now, the Bible says it was heard that Jesus was in the house. And this morning, I want to release that word to you this morning, that it is being heard that Jesus is in your house. Jesus is your shepherd. Jesus is your Lord. Jesus is your keeper. Jesus is your shade upon your right hand. Jesus is the one who is the Lord of your house. So it will be heard that God is with you. The Bible says, Emmanuel, God is with you with us praise the lord the bible says here it was heard that jesus was in the house immediately wow i love that immediately and i believe that there's things that are going to happen in your life that it will be heard that jesus is with you and immediately there'll be an immediate response there'll be an immediate response why does god do what he does in your life is so that he can draw all people to himself. Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I shall draw all men unto myself. These brothers and sisters in Christ, we are living in the last days. This is the last hour. And I believe that in this time, um, God is gathering people to himself. He's gathering humanity to himself. And the Bible says, immediately many gathered together so that there was no longer room to receive them not even near the door. So as soon as they heard that Jesus was in the house, people began to flood there. And the house, the house was full to capacity. And the Bible goes on to say, and he preached the word to them. The ministry of Jesus, when we read the beginning of Mark's gospel, the very first chapter, the very first verse tells us that the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ it's the beginning of the gospel and praise God the gospel has begun and the gospel has not ended praise the Lord hallelujah amen Jesus preached the word to them Psalms 107 verse 20 tells us that God sent forth his word and he healed them now when we look at the same the same account in st. Luke's gospel chapter number 2 Verse 17 tells us, just after telling us that Jesus preached the word to them, the Bible says, and the power of God was present to heal them. So Jesus, that's, that's the ministry of Jesus Christ. It's the ministry of preaching, teaching, and healing. There are three things that Jesus done. He preached, he teached, and he healed. Amen. And he's the same. And I believe this morning he's speaking a word to you. You must understand that the word of God has power to accomplish exactly what it has been sent to do. The Bible says here, and he preached the word to them. Hallelujah. Verse uh, chapter 2 of Luke's gospel, verse 17 says, and the power of God was present to heal them. Then they came to him. Watch here. Then they came to him bringing a paralytic who was carried by four men. And when they could not come near him because of the crowd, they uncovered the roof where he was. So here are four friends. They bring their, brother, they bring their friend on a stretcher. And when they get to the house, because everybody got to the house, they went to the house expecting, expecting probably some expecting to see miracles expecting to see the works of God because Luke's gospel tells us that the power of God was present to heal them so that's the thing wherever the word of God is being preached wherever the word of God is being taught there is power that is made available the thing is um, how responsive and how receptive are we to that power which can bring us healing which can bring the transformation in our lives 
And here these four guys come to the house and the house is full to capacity. There's no way in. The door is closed because of the throngs of the crowd that have gathered there to hear Jesus. And we find here that when they couldn't come near him because of the crowd, they uncovered the roof where he was. So these guys said, we're not going to settle for it, the fact that we can't get in. We're going to make a way in. So they go all the way to the roof. They carry their friend up to the roof. And they begin to take the tiles off the roof. And when they uncover the roof, and when they saw that they had broken through, they let down the bed on which the paralytic was lying. See that? So they opened the roof and they let down their friend on his bed. The Bible goes on to say that when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic son, your sins are forgiven you. Jesus saw their faith. And that's what I want to share with you this morning, is that God responds to faith. Hebrews 11 verse 6 tells us without Faith, it is impossible to please God, for he who comes to him must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Praise God. And the Bible says here, Jesus saw their faith. In other words, the faith they had, it was not a shallow faith. It was not a faith that's here today, gone tomorrow. It was a deep-rooted faith. It was a deep-seeded faith. And that was the type of faith of note. That Jesus took note of their faith. He saw their faith. And he says to the paralytic son, your sins are forgiven you. And some of the scribes were sitting there and reasoning in their hearts. Why does this man speak blasphemies like this? Who can forgive sins but God alone? So... In the eyes of the scribes and in the eyes of the leaders that were gathered there, that they looked at it and they saw that they, to them Jesus was blaspheming. And that's what they reasoned in their hearts. But immediately, watch this, immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they reasoned thus within themselves, he said to them, why do you reason about these things in your hearts? John chapter 2 verse 25 tells us that Jesus, Jesus knew what was in the heart of all men. He knows what's in your heart. Hebrews 4 verse 12 tells us that the word of God is sharper, it is quick and powerful, it's sharper than any two-edged sword, setting asunder bone and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Now Jesus is the word. So Jesus actually pierced their thoughts, pierced their heart. He could, he could see what, what they were reasoning in themselves. And immediately Jesus responds to them. And he says to them, why do you reason about these things in your heart? Which is easier to say to the paralytic, your, son, your, your sins are forgiven you. Or to say, arise, take up your bed and walk. But that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. I love this. You, uh, Luke's Gospel, I shared with you, chapter 2, verse 17 says, the power of God was present to heal them. And that same power which was present to heal is the same power which was present also to forgive. This was power to forgive. And for the Jewish folk, for the leaders of, of Jesus' day, for them, this is something that has never been done before. Since when can a man forgive sins? And here Jesus comes and he says to them, that you may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. Jesus says to the paralytic, I say to you, I say to you, arise, take up your bed and go to your house. I believe that what God is saying to you this morning. I believe that's what Jesus is saying to somebody this morning. Arise, take up your bed and go to your house. Quit lying on your, on your situation. Quit lying 
on your challenge. Quit being at the mercy of the condition that you find yourself in. Jesus has made you more than a conqueror in Him. Hallelujah. You are more than a conqueror in Him. And He gives you the power and the ability to rise above those circumstances. He gives you the power and the ability to take up your bed this morning and to walk. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. He says to him, Arise, take up your bed. And go to your house immediately. Watch here. Immediately the paralytic arose, took up the bed, and went out. He went out in the presence of them all. <laughs> Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. I believe this is what Jesus did for this man. That, yes, everybody looked at this and they probably thought, my word, this is something ridiculous. These guys open, they break the roof, break through the roof of this house. They let down this man and all of a sudden, now they, um, they look at the condition of this man and they think, how on earth is this man ever going to stand? How on earth is this man ever going to walk? And Jesus releases a word to him. Firstly, what the man needed. You see, Jesus knows the heart of man. He knows what you need more than what you think you need. Now, to everybody else there, they knew this man needed healing. But Jesus knew that this man needed forgiveness more so. And that Jesus identified. So he saw the faith of the four friends. He also saw the faith. The paralytic also had faith. I'm certain of it. That he probably prompted them. Listen, if we can't get through, friends, let's go up. Let's go up. Let's find a way in. And I believe that we need somebody. There's somebody out there this morning that is kind of in the same predicament. It doesn't matter if the door has been shut. We serve a God who opens doors. Hallelujah. God will open doors. It doesn't matter if a door has closed on you. The good news is that God is in the door opening business and he says I set before you an open door. He's the one who opens doors no man can shut. He's the one who closes doors that no man can open. I believe this morning that God will close the door on your past that it will be remembered no more. So quit looking back now but look ahead of you. Look to the open door that God has set before you. Hallelujah. And Jesus says to this man son your sins have been forgiven you. And all of a sudden people begin to reason about this man. And they begin to reason about Jesus more so. And then Jesus says that you may know the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sin. And he asked him a question which is easier to say. Son, your sins are forgiven you. Or to say, rise up, take your bed and walk. But that you may know that he has the power. He said to the paralytic, rise up, take up your bed and walk. Hallelujah. And that is exactly what happened. And when Jesus demonstrated that, Jesus identified that this man knew that he was the Messiah. He had trust in Jesus as the Messiah. He had trust in Jesus as the Son of God. And when Jesus released that word of forgiveness, immediately he was forgiven. Praise the Lord. Let me share something with you quickly, friends, in the book of Psalms. I just feel a prompting in my spirit. Psalms 103. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus. Psalm 103. And I want to read for you from... Let's read from verse 1. And then I want to share something else with you. But from verse 1. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits. There are benefits in serving God. And now he begins, he says, Who forgives all your iniquities. You see that forgiveness comes first. Who forgives all your iniquities. Who heals all your diseases. Who redeems your life from destruction. Who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. Who satisfies your mouth with good things. So that your youth is renewed like the eagles. And verse 12 says this. That's what I want to read to you. Verse 12. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. As a father pities his children, so the Lord pities those who fear him. For he knows our frame. He remembers that we are dust. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter. You may have missed the mark. It doesn't matter what you've done. But we serve a God of love. A God who's rich in love. A God who's rich in mercy. And God will forgive you. If you confess your sins, the Bible says He's just and, for, 
is just and faithful to forgive us of all sin. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all iniquity and all unrighteousness. And I believe this morning that there's forgiveness for you. Quit having a court case in your mind. Quit beating yourself over, over your head for all the mistakes that you have made. God can set you free this morning. Jesus sets you free this morning. Jesus makes you whole this morning. The Bible says that when Jesus released that word, immediately the young man arose, took up his bed, and went out in the presence of them all, so that all were amazed and glorified God, saying, We never saw anything like this. I believe God is able to do something that you've never seen in your life. God is about to do something in your life that nobody has ever seen before. But you've got to trust God. There are three things that we can glean from this portion of scripture that I've shared with you this morning. Number one is that for miracles to manifest, there needs to be expectation. Expectation is the breeding ground of all miracles. If you look at the book of Acts, the book of Acts chapter number three, I want to share with you, here's another account of a man that they laid daily at the temple gate. Acts chapter 3. This is a man that was lame from his mother's womb. And we find that they laid him daily at the temple, at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful. And he was laid there to ask alms. And then verse number 3 says, This man, he saw Peter and John, about to go into the temple and he was asking for arms and fixing what you fixing his eyes on him with John Peter said to him look at us so he gave them his attention here's the thing friends you've got to give give him your attention give Jesus your attention give God your attention so this he gave him he gave them his attention this young, this young man gave them his attention, expecting to receive something from them. So they, he gave them his attention, number one, and secondly, he expected to receive something from them. So you must expect. You must expect, because when you expect, it's going to happen. You're going to give birth to something. So this man, he gave them his attention, and he expected to receive something from them, and then Peter says to him, silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. Hallelujah. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. So he leaping up stood and walked and entered the temple with them. Walking, leaping, and praising God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus. So you see that, friends, that is the ingredient, the, or the secret, rather. Secret number one is expectation. There needs to be expectation. Secondly, there needs to be determination. How determined are you to get your miracle? How determined are you to get your breakthrough? These guys, together with the paralytic, they made up their minds. They will stop at nothing. If they can't get in through the window, if they can't get in through the door, they're going to make a way where there is no way. So they climbed to the top of the house where Jesus was, and they, too, and they, tore, the, they tore the roof apart so that they could lay down their friend, that he could receive his healing, that he could receive his breakthrough. Praise God. So that's... Number two, secret number two is be determined. How determined are you? And then lastly, point number three is have faith in God. All things are possible to him who believes. Hebrews 11 verse 6, I shared with you earlier. Hallelujah. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. When you come to God, you must believe that he is, that he exists, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So you've got to be diligent as well. That woman that, you know, very often we refer to this woman, the woman with the issue of blood, that woman was determined within herself that she will be healed. The thing is, how determined are you? 
Or are you just going to let everything bury you? No, don't let anything bury you. Don't let the stories of people bury you. Don't let the people's opinions bury you. You can raise the roof this morning. Take off the limitations. Take the limitations off God this morning. God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you could ask or think. Hallelujah. That's the God that we serve this morning. And I believe that Jesus has something that he wants to do in your life. He hasn't changed. The Bible says the power of God was present to heal them all. Friends, the power of God is not only available to us on a Sunday morning when we find ourselves sitting in the, cha uh, sitting in the church. Because most people, that's what they do. Come to church to fill the pews. No, you come to church to fill your spirit, fill your heart with the word of God. Hallelujah. You're not there to be a bench warmer hallelujah you're not a bench warmer you're there you're a participant of the grace of God you're a participant in what God has done in salvation in giving us this glorious gift of salvation it's time you participated it's time you grabbed a hold of what God has rightfully given you in Christ Jesus it's time that you enjoyed all the benefits of your salvation as I just read to you in Psalm 103 this morning hallelujah you can bless the Lord and you can praise the Lord that you are God's property amen and there's nothing nothing that the enemy can do that uh, you know can do to stop that Hallelujah. Don't let anything rob you of God's best for you. Praise God. Well, I trust that you've been blessed by this broadcast this morning. And I believe that you've been in that you've been encouraged this morning by the word of God. And I want to encourage you this morning to go for the word of God, especially in the day and age that we are in, especially in the hour that we are in. Start filling your spirit man with the word of God. And as you fill your spirit man with the word of God, start speaking it out. Start speaking it out and you will see the miracles flowing. Amen. Praise God. So the roof that I can see this morning is probably words that you have spoken forth over your own life, probably words people have spoken over you. And you've kind of maybe buried yourself, but you can change that this morning. You can rip the tiles of that roof apart this morning purely by changing your words and start speaking the word of God and start praying in faith and believing God in faith. And you can expect and you must be determined and receive it by faith this morning. Receive your healing this morning. Receive your strength this morning. Receive your life back this morning. Take back your life this morning. That is what I'm trying to get across. And that is what I believe that God wants you to do in this hour. Take your life back. Don't allow life to trample all over you. But you rise up this morning. Take up your bed. And you walk in this glorious life that God has given you in Christ Jesus. Well, praise God. Hallelujah. If you haven't received the Lord Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, I would like to give you the opportunity now to receive him as your Lord and Savior by saying the simple prayer of faith with me. Maybe you were once, you know, walking with the Lord. You probably, you know, went off course, you know, but it's okay. God will forgive you. God will receive you back. Amen. He's, he's the father who receives the prodigal son back. And I believe that God will receive you back. God will be glad this morning. There's great joy in heaven this morning because you're coming back home. It's time you came back home. And that's what God is saying. Come back home. Hallelujah. Praise God. Well, just pray with me this simple prayer of faith. Say, Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. According to your word, if I shall confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus and believe with all of my heart that God raised him from the dead, I shall be saved. Right now, Lord Jesus, I confess you as the Lord and Savior of my life. I open the door of my heart to you. I receive you as my personal Lord and Savior. I believe that you died for my sin. I believe that you rose again from the dead. I believe that you ascended into heaven and you are seated at the right hand of God the Father. I thank you this morning, Lord Jesus, for your death, your burial, and your resurrection. And I receive right now your free gift of eternal life. And I declare from this moment on, I'm born again. I'm a child of the living God. And I thank you now, Lord Jesus, for the new life you have given me. Satan, you have no unsettled claims concerning my life. I no longer belong to you. I no longer belong to the world. 
I'm a child of the living God. In Jesus' blessed name, I am born again. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Well, praise God. If you said that prayer with us this morning, please write to us. The details are appearing on the screen. Share with us what the Lord has done in your life. We love to hear from you. Keep those prayer requests coming in. We pray for you often. We love you very much and we thank God for you. Stretch your hands as I release the final blessing. The Lord bless you. The Lord keep you in the palm of His hand. May the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ of Nazareth be with you and your loved ones and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest upon you and abide with you both now and forevermore in Jesus' blessed name and the people of God said, Amen, Amen and Amen. Well, praise God. This is Pastor Ricardo saying thank you so much for joining us. Um, we love you very much. We pray for you often. Goodbye and God bless you.